Christian. That's for, that's for normal people. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Good morning. Good afternoon. Hello is a better phrase because that meets everybody. We're delighted to be back with love note number 14. 14. That was just on the tip of my tongue. I would have got there. And uh, we're delighted to welcome Marnix Powells. And uh, we've just been having a chat mainly about animals and countryside. So we were really getting prepared for this. But I'm going to keep my introduction really short because the title of our conversation or what we're going to listen to Marnix talking about is why do people talk so much? And it suddenly made me quite self-conscious. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So welcome, Marnik. Thank you for giving us your time um, today. And yeah. why do they talk so much? Yeah, well, I, I reflected on that a little bit this morning. And because my, my memory is, is very like a memory of somebody who doesn't have a memory. So I, I wrote stuff down. And I'm going to read what i what i did the, the couple of reasons i i came up uh, i came up with uh, why people talk so much now obviously we talk because we like to communicate we like to be in conversation with others uh, as an exchange of wishes and preferences and ideas that's that's one them a very obvious reason um then we are through conversing, we are looking for appreciation. We are looking for acceptance and acknowledgement. So I exist. I'm worthy. I say something. People say something back. So I exist. And if they say something back that is in my sphere of interests, I feel even better. So um, then there is the another reason is expressing your ideas about the world makes you feel like a specific person. Like you're you're actually a, a person with with all these specific traits, these specific uh, uh, personal uh, values and ideas. It makes you more of a solid entity. Uh, and 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 another reason that's close to that is that um, talking and uh, having conversations gives more meaning and flavor to our character. You know, you can be a, you can uh, see yourself as a funny person or as a, an ironic person, or a smart person, or a, a thoughtful person, or even a spiritual person. And you use all these spiritual language when you talk to people. So it's, it's also a means to show the world who you think you are, and to, to underline your character, the character you're playing. Now, it's also a re, uh, uh, one of the reasons is also to check out the water to see if we are in alignment with the people that are around us. Like, uh, what do you think about this? I think the same. Ooh, I'm safe. Oh. So that's one other reason. And a big reason is because it scares the fuck out of us when we don't talk when we're with somebody. It's like because we suddenly start to hear the voice in our head so much. And we become, we become painfully 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 self-aware and we really don't like that most of us don't like that it's very confronting so if we just keep on talking we don't hear the voice that's that's another reason so that's those were the the five six things i came up with do we have do you have uh, more ideas or I, I, um, yeah, no, I, everything that you've just said makes perfect sense. And the la you know, the, la the last piece that you just, you know, <laughs> it's like, we don't have to listen to that voice in our head if we're busy talking. And, it, you know, I think most people would say, and I'm, well, I'll speak for myself, and I'll speak, I'll speak for myself. I actually love silence. You know, I really, really savor silence. And yet, when I'm with other people, it's interesting to me that, um, you know, if I'm with somebody I know really well, silence can be comfortable, but mostly it's not. And so you're saying, you know, you're pointing to, well, for me, it feels more like it's, it's like the social acceptable, the socially acceptable thing is to talk. The unsocially acceptable thing is to just be silent together when you've just met somebody, for example, or you're sitting in a group of people or you go to a party or something, you know, it's like, Okay, I've got to talk. What shall I say? And, and that's where the social anxiety comes in. I'm not saying I'm socially anxious, but I find I have, you know, I do think I've been shy. Um, it's that it's that idea in my head about not being interesting, not having anything good to say. It's not good enough. It's not interesting enough. Um, so would that be the sort of 
voice that you're talking about inside your yeah. head. When yeah. You, yeah, and I think so, it, it is in, in the conversation with people, it looks like we are, feel compelled to create this persona and constantly add mm -hmm. stuff to it and, and say stuff to 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 show that that's actually the person who we, who we are and and of course things like i'm not interesting are very important I, I i can i can still recall all the conversations i had when i was talking to a person and they just looked over my shoulder and it it crushed me yeah like oh i'm not i'm not interesting enough so are they looking for a better conversation partner and all these extra thinking got in my head and now when people do it I, I can do it 50 times in, in a minute. I don't I don't care at all. I just say the things I'm saying. If, and if I feel like the interest is gone, it's like, bye, and I'm off. And what you're saying about I love the silence, being silent. Um, yeah, of course, we can develop and cultivate an appreciation for being on our own. But that's just, just if you're okay with the voice in our head. Most people hate it. They hate it. Most people, that's what, that's what they call boring. You yeah. know, you sit somewhere and then your voice in your head and then you, you, you become restless because of the voice in your head and you want to do something. That's what boring is. Like boring is not being able to just sit peacefully with the voice in your head. We have to learn this. You, you know, most people are terrified of that voice because... They think it's who they are and, and it's very judgmental and it's very critical and it says all these nasty things and we believe them. So, well, another Netflix movie, uh, to, you know, let's let's send five texts to different people and let's hope that somebody's there. So well, at least we can have a conversation and I can put my attention somewhere else. But like you, I didn't like being on my own and then i drank a lot in order to be okay with that and now i i can day on my uh, be on my own for days i love it and i have no clue what i do the whole day i love it i love be just wandering through my ha house and riding a bit sitting on the couch drinking coffee petting the cat having a conversation with one person maybe and then watching a video and i love and, and especially over the last week i've gone uh, up this game like I'm, I'm constantly looking for stillness and I love it. And yesterday I was in a, at a birthday party and then I just I turn on the, the social knob and up, there here I am again and talk, 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 talk. And when I've had it, I'm just like, thanks everybody, poof, and I'm gone again. So I never, I never feel uh, pushed or compelled or forced to stay longer than I want to or be in a conversation I don't want to. I don't like shallow conversations anymore. I can do them pretty pretty well, but I don't like them anymore. I don't think they're very interesting. So I kind of skip them and put them out of my life. Yeah, and the thing is, you, you can always find people who are interested in having meaningful conversations. They're yeah. everywhere. Yeah, th for me, uh, everything you said resonated. And I, I'm still in all of those things. I do enjoy silence, but I'm also conscious of the fact that I break silence. And I do, you know, I quite like meaningful conversations. But I'm not very good at debating. I don't enjoy the th cut and thrust of that. Now, my husband loves that. So I don't enjoy that. I would rather just listen to somebody tell me what they think about things um, and then be listened to. I think that's really, really kind when someone's going to, will just listen. But I, I love, see, if I go out walking the dog and meet people, I just love the exchange of hi, how are you doing? Oh, you know, is your dog friendly? And we have these really, what you'd say, a superficial conversation. But for me, it's it's a bit like the stuff of community life that I mm. thoroughly enjoy. Now, my husband's got a tolerance for that. I have not timed him, but it's not long. And so he, his feet wander off and he's looking up at the tree or he's thinking, I don't know what he's thinking. Sometimes I think I do. And I'm just, I mean, I could spend hours just getting to know somebody in the edge of a field. But because it feels so friendly and connected and mm. none of it matters there's nothing on it and that's mm -hmm. i think i enjoy and then i don't think i still i'm not there yet where i can spend a day in the house and be peaceful without doing something or thinking i should be doing something um and i've never lived on my own so i've never had that experience and i, th I think it's just fascinating I, yeah i think it's a very very good point um, because what I just realized is that 
in a way, I, I, I see two different shallow or the superficial conversations. The one is, the first you, is the one you're talking about is where there's really nothing at stake. It's just like you're being with another person, stuff comes out of your mouth and you talk, oh, that's a nice tree. Yeah, I had a tree like that. Like, oh, really? And then you're just like, you're not really going anywhere. And then you have the, the, the power situation where you are with somebody and you're kind of brag about stuff and then you have to go, what's your, you know, what do you do and are you good at it? And so, so there's more. And of course, I'm not going to three principalize this like it's all in your head. Please, let's not go there this morning. But um, <laughs> I see the difference in the, 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 the how laid back it can be to meet somebody and sit on a bench and just, you know, and there's also no constant pressure of keeping, you know, you don't have to keep on talking. And it feels different. It feels like you're saying more kind and more friendly and less like it's supposed to go somewhere or really mean any anything. Um, but it's the, yeah, it's the thing I, I can't talk about, uh, like politics and football and stuff like that. I don't, I don't care about that anymore. Like what you said about your, your husband who likes to debate. I don't see debating as meaningful conversations. I see debating as ego competition. <laughs> That's it. You know, you, you, you throw some arguments to the other side and then people dodge them and they throw arguments back. Debating is not about listening. It's about talking, it's about sending. Mm. That's what I... Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because my favourite thing to do is I listen a lot and yeah. I and it's so noticeable to me when I'm in conversation in conversation with somebody who's not listening. Like th this morning, you know, I was I, I would go for physio, I would go for physio at the moment. NHS, you know, um, what you call the free medical system here in Spain. Um, and there's this anyway. I'm I'm my physios ask me a question and I'm answering the question and the physio in the next sort of cubicle over shouts something to her totally interrupts the conversation and she's shouting back at him and it's like isn't it interesting how there's just like she's asked me a question I answer a question but that doesn't matter anymore what matters is what's happening over there on the other side of the room that they're shouting backwards and forwards at each other and it's just it's what happens so much in society isn't it today that this and it was like talking there was all this talk coming at me versus you know it, it, it was just Okay, so I'll just I'll just stop talking. And so, so so when she came back to me, that that was the end of that conversation until the next thing he shouted over. And it was like, I'm not even gonna bother trying to have a conversation anymore because there's, there's no listening going on here. It's, and that's that's the bits that's missing for me a lot in society today is that people will, the, this small talk idea, people are just, they just wanna talk. They just wanna talk and talk and talk, but don't want to listen. Um, and, 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 and they I think they really really can can help it that much if they don't because everybody mm -hmm. does it you know, it's like it's like when you when every, everybody's in, involved in, in it, everybody think it's important and there but there's no inclination to, to take it a little bit deeper and and it's safe to, to stay there I don't like the safety that much but you know when you say there are pe people hardly listen um, I, I agree but um, that's one of the advantages of, of being a coach, something you can offer to people. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I think it's pretty helpful that the world doesn't listen because it only <laughs> makes what we do more interesting and more, more valuable. Yeah. Uh, more valuable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's probably why I notice it so much because I, I, I live mainly in a world of coaching and this sort of conversation. And then when I'm going in the real world, it, it's like, whoa, this is what it's like out here. <laughs> Take me <Yeah>. back. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah so the, the, the whole, yeah, and that's a good point too, you know, about conversing and about being in a conversation. I, I am like that. I, I'm very much in, in the Facebook bubble of the coaches and three principles. And I constantly forget that that's not, the world so you know it's like and we're talking about the the social dilemma this this uh mm. just before this conversation documentary yeah. yeah on netflix and about all the the uh, implications of being online and, and i think it's a it's a topic for now but um um it is it is 
it is easy for us to forget that we only get such a small uh, uh, glim glimpse of what the world is. And then we believe that's the world. Like, oh, that's it. That's what I see. That's what I read. That's what I hear. And of course, you can't step out of, of really step out of your world. Um, because even when you step out of your world, it becomes part of your world. So you'll never, you never see the bigger picture. You can't. But it's good to be aware of this. Like, you can never live without thinking. It's thinking just does what it does, but you can become aware of the fact that you don't have to pay much attention to it. Now that's a big win for most people, but it's not like, you know, the, 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 the best situation in life is there when you have no thinking whatsoever. It seems that Eckhart Tolle has got that and other, some other spiritual teachers have that. Um, but just knowing that that's what's going on makes you a little bit more conscious around your own, how much you, hang on to your own ideas, right? You know, mm -hmm. because when I'm in the three principles bubble on Facebook, everything agrees to what I say. <laughs> when I'm outside on the street in Amsterdam, that's not true. <laughs> so much. Um, no. Yeah, I'm always surprised when that happens. I walk out the front door, and, like physio this morning's like, yeah. this is not the world I live. People listen to me when I speak, you know, it's just like shouting across the other, like, whoa, I felt, I felt like I'm definitely in a different world, definitely. Interesting. I, think the, I think the world that we're referring to in, with the social dilemma aspect is this technology that um, certainly the last couple of generations are w really involved in. It feels like, well, is that the new talking? Is because it, that seems more frenzied in a way because you can tap this thing out and then get a reply. And if you're connected, as so many young people are, to so many people, they'll get dozens of replies and then they're caught up because it will reply to everybody or else they're being rude and... I think that has, I don't know, for me, it feels like it's a direction that needs careful, careful scrutiny because um, it doesn't feel very, um, to me, it doesn't feel very positive that, that um, we're, lo we're sort of losing, I think, the, the, the expression, when I was at university, I, used, I was in love with my, uh, one of my uh, lecturers and he, he used to call it mumbly peg. He said, historically, this is what people would do because they didn't travel a long way, but they'd meet their neighbor or the person in the community and it would be mumbly peg. They'd just pass the time of day. And that was, that was kind of the cohesion. And that was the glue that, in the community. It wasn't, they weren't trying to make points. It was just about co just a connection, if you like. Right. And um, I think young people have been suckered into thinking constant contact is connection. And I think constant con contact is the opposite. I think it's it's a frenzy of trying to get something. You don't even know what you're looking for anymore because you've forgotten that that primal kind of connection that you have where this is not about words. Yeah, it, it teaches it teaches the, the younger people, but also the adults, adults like let's be honest, we are all victim of this whole change of the system, whether we're doing it ourselves or we are, are surrounded by grown-ups who do it. I think especially younger people, but also everybody who uses this, this technology, we get used to um, like a, this constant confirmation of who we are by in the form of likes and uh, responses and we start craving it it's like when we don't have it we don't exist that's for for some people for young people it's not a not, not a big deal to to talk to 30 people at the same time on different platforms yeah you know really really <laughs> no they just do, they just do it without a problem the problem is when the the talks stop because it's really deeply feels like they're not interested anymore and the talks always stop there's always a moment when people are doing something else you know it, it there's no and, and 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 what we can then get is that we start to look for the acknowledgement you know instead of just being with people we don't learn it anymore my, my daughter he did she didn't really learn how to uh be with a boy like look, look him in the eye and have a conversation. Oh, and she's getting there and she's trying it. And because the thing is, I am very optimistic, to, to be honest. I have no, I, I can't prove it. But I just feel very optimistic about, I think we'll, there will be a, a moment 
in time and it won't take ages uh centuries that we say nah this is not what we truly want mm -hmm. we just we just stop it I, i really 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 believe that mm -hmm. so like and the social network is a very alarming documentary and i i understand that but i also see that coming uh, you know trying to do something about a problem coming from a position of of, of this yeah. franticness is not very helpful no definitely because if you come come at it something you're you're addicted and that's a problem well but most people say no leave me alone you creep yeah. freak <laughs> get out of my life is that you what know, i said to you Monic? nobody ever says that to me it must just be you <laughs> i hear Sorry. it all the time <laughs> but I learned this the hard way, you know, when I talked yeah. just before this conversation, I talked about my the second book I wrote about screen addiction. Nobody bought it. And it was a very judgmental book. It was like, you're doing it wrong and you shouldn't do it. And you're losers and you're wasting away your life. And of course, nobody wants to read that. Mm -hmm. It's like the like the, the activist vegan who who's just in your face and, 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 mm -hmm. and tells you you're bad for having a cat and still eating meat and stuff like that. You know, I had a colleague like that. And every time I talked to him and he came up with his 50 arguments why I was an asshole for eating meat, I started eating more meat just to fuck oh. him off, like piss oh. him off. Oh. <laughs> I think you're absolutely right. I mean, you learn that through parenting, if nothing else, that if you apply, well, there's a physical thing, isn't it? Apply pressure, you'll get resistance. And I think going right back to one of the points I think we both of you made is that is this listening piece. I, I mean, I, I, can't, I feel like I've learned that the hard way and on a long, slow road, but who cares because that's just a judgment. I don't know what he, he's got any meaning at all, but what I, what I really, really value in my friendships is when I can speak and, and not be offered advice unless I say, what do you think would be a good approach? And I've come to value that as really, really precious. And it's, I find it's very, very rare. And I don't, I don't, I don't blame, I can still have wonderful, I've got beautiful friendships, but I just don't go there. I just don't go to that friendship. If I want mm. to share something where I feel I would love to just hear myself a little bit expressing something, but I don't want it to mean something in your world. I just want to say it out loud and have somebody hear that. Because I think that's, incredible thing i don't even think i can put words to the value of it and so now I've, I've, i can be discern that and sometimes it can be a stranger and it's just wonderful you know um and i having had that experience and i it's taught me that's what i can offer that's something that i can offer it's not a you don't have to do a degree or a, a, a coaching qualification to listen to somebody truly listen um and then if people, people talk, that's a wonderful opportunity for them to hear themselves talking. And I don't think they know that they're, you know, I didn't know that. I knew I was uneasy. I can remember one particular friend I had and I met her husband and I used to feel so, so uncomfortable because he never said anything. <laughs> and I'd start cracking jokes and making sort of a sigh thinking, what's going on here? He doesn't speak. But he did, but he was just very quiet. And when he, when he had something to say, he'd speak. It took me ages to feel comfortable with him. Really a long time. Thank you for listening. Yeah, I was just thinking that. I was really thinking <laughs> that. brought back that thing of that excruciating embarrassment because I just didn't know how to be with somebody that was that quiet. He must have thought, who is this woman? <laughs> yeah and and you know the thing is when my of course you i was thinking when you were, were, were talking about your appreciation of just being able to to say things to people without them coming up with a solution i always hear that's a typical male thing like male yeah. yes. male <laughs> beings always come up with solutions and um what, what i see more and more and more and more and more and more is so important to me it's so easy to make being a good listener into a next level, better person thing, like we do with everything. Like mm -hmm. so what I mean is um, that there is this, we have this version of ourselves, and then we have the listening version of ourselves, and that's the mm -hmm. better version of ourselves, and that we are better people when we don't come up with solutions. I think it's all about what you feel good 
about and in and with and from like sometimes i listen really really deeply and i love it i'm in love with my own listening I'm like ah oh, i'm cool. and sometimes i just talk for an hour and it's well it depends on the moment and what i want what my if i have a busy head if i think i'm brilliant i'm in a brilliant monologue i have that a lot and <laughs> just to be okay with how you are and then maybe you because you become okay you you relax a little bit around it and then from there you have you feel less inclined to constantly babble because you're way more relaxed but it should what i maybe i'm saying this to myself probably am should turn you shouldn't turn it into a thing like oh well yeah. listening to the world is my superpower and if i don't listen i'm a bad person and mm -hmm. because people who come up with solutions they really mean well of course oh yes so, so we're saying so what you're saying there is i think it's a really good catch as well my harmonics i think that's a good catch because we can become very judgmental of ourselves but not listening or other people that are not listening and um I, I, what what occurred to me when Sue was talking about listening, and I'm, I'm curious about your take on this, and you said something about it earlier on, and I did want to circle back to it. So when you said earlier on about um, people call that boring, so uh, you were referring to people having to, on some level, listen to their own thoughts, I think. Mm -hmm. So, is it, you know, is there a correlation between how... For example, I'm willing to listen to other people and I have capacity for that and I really enjoy that versus, you know, listening to oneself, you know, are oh, we not giving oh, ourselves enough space or, or are, you, are you suggesting that we just ignore what's going on in our head? I mean, that's, I'm curious about that, how you see it. I'm suggesting nothing. You have to find out for yourself. Oh, yeah. You have, let's, to, okay. you have to, you have to let's, do what let's feels good. It. Let's explore it now, Marnie. <laughs> I think that um, it this, the, the two go hand in hand when you know when you start to be fine with because when you listen to somebody you learn very much about the voice in your head yeah exactly. and when you learn to when you yeah. learn to listen better you learn to appreciate and that the fact that you don't have to you know respond to every brilliant answer your voice comes up with like you're listening oh this is a good idea i should put this in the conversation and i can take it over and then i can show people how brilliant i am you know it took me a long time to be able to let it go to just and it's it's very um it's a it's a it's a mean confrontation the first time you dive into this whole idea of trying to stay silent and then the amount of crap that's going on in your head and it's so enticing and it's so, you know, the mind is so cunning. It has all these amazing things that it gives you and presents to you. And then you can work with it and you can throw it into the conversation. And no, this is really helpful. I have to say this. So when you <laughs> become comfortable around this and, not, and learn not to give into it every time you're presented with an idea, and it happens all, all the time, of course you also become more relaxed when you're on your own because it's just the same mm -hmm. it's the exact same thing and 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 when you realize that you don't have to listen to it and when you really start to forcefully ignore it that's also not very helpful mm -hmm. because it's still a form of attention yeah it doesn't exist it's <laughs> not there <laughs> you have to you have to find your own playful way to just be not being bothered by it too much and and then you find when you come when you when you see something like and you cultivate that um the voice quiets down have you seen that like there's less i think you know as, you, as we're talking well, here i I'm, I'm realizing so you know 10 years into the principles it's like i think i think i'm realizing that's when, you know, we talked before, I, I'm quite happy. I live on my own. I've lived on my own now for a few years and I really enjoy my own company and not most people until I don't, you know, and then it's like, oh, I think I'll, I think I feel like talking, but you know, I, I'm, I'm very, very comfortable on my own. Um, and I don't feel like I'm torturing myself all day or anything. <laughs> so I think uh, somehow that has happened without me actually realizing it, you know, as, as you're talking about it there, I think, 
given given my you know my profession is coaching and learning a lot about deep listening over the years with Jack Pansky being out here and and sitting through many trainings I think probably without me realizing a lot has quietened down and yeah and I'm yeah it's just quieter inside so I get jarred sometimes by a lot of noise so I guess maybe that's a signal that I am really quite, I'm, you know, go out again, go out into that world out there and it's like, whoa, it's this noisy, is it? <laughs> you know, and it's, um, yeah, I think it's happened naturally and it's not like I had a massive insight about it or anything. I just, I just think I'm recognizing I probably, I could, I could, there's still space for more compassion for myself. I mean, I'm not saying I'm there at all, but I think, you know, I think I'm, I'm away there. I'm away there. Yeah. Abilities, because it, it's, it's so many people, as you said, that just can't spend time on themselves by themselves and constantly need distracting. That's the phone, isn't it? You just pick the mobile up all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time. I see that in a lot of people around me. It's like they don't even know they're doing it. No, yeah. no idea they're even picking it up and can't sit. You know, waiting for a doctor's appointment. Can't just sit with on the beach. I was on the beach yesterday. People on the phones on the beach, and I'm thinking. Gosh, why are you on your phone when you can look at all this and just be by the sea and you know watch watch the waves? It just you know, but that's my that's my judgmental thinking, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But I was enjoying myself. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. That's the most important thing, and and you'll and you'll find or or you just enjoy yourself, and and everybody's is very up in their head and very uncomfortable, mm -hmm. or you find a person who's sitting ten meters across you and looks at you and think, oh. Why is that person so relaxed and happy? Oh, there's no phone. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Why are those and no, people... per and no person next to her talking? <laughs> well, my own. Is, the other one is why are those people speaking to each other? Oh, because they haven't got phones. <laughs> well, one of the things since I've lived here, which is five years, and especially since I've had my dog, I, I, I've, I've found in all the years that I've been curious about how we work is that everything I've learned really might have been like a seed might have been sown in a conversation or a training or whatever, but life has been the thing. My own experience has been the thing I, I believe that has helped me to see things. So just recently I was reflecting on, we've got numerous walks, but I can uh, so often the walks, but this is a different walk to the walk I did yesterday, even though I'm on the, on the same path because I'm, I'm here today. And I realized that the day before I wasn't here on the walk, I was doing mm -hmm. it, but I wasn't mm -hmm. here. And it's been wonderful. It's almost like there's a barometer for me out, out there in the countryside. Um, not, not, I don't concentrate on it. It's just occurs to me sometimes, wow, are you really here today? It's just amazing. I'm just loving it. It's like breathtaking. And yet that isn't my constant experience. Um, and I feel, well, that's beautiful for me to have that kind of, Feed, no, it's not even feedback. They're not really words, but I'm either there or I'm not, and I get that to get to see that, and I get a consciousness of it, if you like, as opposed to um, not even noticing. I mean, I think I think when you were saying earlier about people, why do people talk so much? One of the reasons is because of the, the getting away from the voice in their head. Well, that really is the basis of addiction, isn't it? In a sense, wanting to move away from something, just. Yep. I don't like oh, but the, but if you don't know that then people don't you know i'm not being patronizing I, i'm the same it's like you don't know what you don't know and there's the innocence of that um i think that the byproduct of not listening to your head so much is that you <coughs> become more aware of the other voice the voice of your heart or your intuition you know mm. that's and and another thing i think that the tragedy of being human is that we don't really realize that every second we live is new. So you, you'll never make the same walk, even if you, need for you, if you walk yeah. the same path. Yeah. But it's the, every walk is different. We don't see it. Children, young children still have this appreciation, not because they learned it, but because they just haven't unlearned it yet. Like they're still, oh, butterfly. Oh, there's another one. And we're like, yeah, butterfly. I've seen one before. <laughs> so what? So it's very sad, actually, that we are so blasé, that we so caught up in our ideas about the world instead of being able to see the present beauty of everything. And I, I, I believe most people <clears throat> long for that. 
you know that's just one of the not not in that they know it that that's what they long for mm -hmm. but within this peace of mind comes more appreciation for the fact that we are alive like we you know the three of us we are creating a, a conversation mm -hmm. like this wasn't there before and then there will never be one like this no. and we have no idea where we were going and what what it would be like we don't appreciate that and it's not as a, an accusation because i I don't appreciate it enough, but it's such a sad thing to realize sometimes that how amazing it is that I look outside, I see cars and bicycles and people mm. with bodies and these bodies are doing all these things. It's like amazing. The only thing I see is, yeah, uh, cars and people, some bikes and so what, uh, saw them before. <laughs> oh, yeah. And waking up to the, to the, to the inherent, uh, you know, a magic of all of this is mm. is also i hope one of the things we we see in the dismantling of this whole idea that everything that in our head is the most important thing that there is so when you mm. stop see when you stop doing that or stop believing that you have all these byproducts like being more present and appreciating stuff that come from this deeper connection and that are not like we, m many people um, believe that doing this stuff will get you there. Like we always, always reverse engineer everything. Mm -hmm. Like what does a happy people do? He looks at the sky and he appreciates the sun. Oh, well, let's start appreciating the sun more. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you yeah. can see why that happened because it's a, it's just a misunderstanding, isn't it? So it's, it's, and when someone points it out it's like I used to think oh, I'm constantly doing a 180 degree turn from from the life that I've lived so far to oh it's not like that at all and it used to surprise me again and again and again and then I thought, oh this is fun can I actually do it can I do it myself can I turn myself around but I couldn't it's like in the moment you suddenly see it differently but you can't say I want to see it differently I'm going to turn around you know it doesn't work or I know how it works and I'm going to force myself to look at it that way I used but to spend I, a lot of time when I understood yeah. the role of thought. I used to spend a lot of time examining them all. Is this a voice of wisdom? Is this from my intuition? Have I learned this? And, and then I think, oh, now I'm using the whole of this understanding against myself because I'm taking more time and there's more on it because now I should know. <laughs> it's yeah. just like you can laugh out loud in moments thinking, oh, mm. You know, yeah, that's the, that's the using the principles thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, where, because we come from all these modalities where we do things yeah. and we use stuff, and then we get into the three principles, and then we just, how do I use it? Yeah. And I talk to so many people who are new to the principles, and they get totally lost in if they hear something, they love it, and then they're ready, but to, you know, to implement it in their life. So how yeah. do I get up in a three principle way? How do I? Yeah. You know, how do I? use three principles on my kids <laughs> my, uh, my favorite story of my granddaughter was when i was trying to explain to her that her granddad was a bit upset and that's why he'd been short-tempered with her and we were in the car driving along she said Mima, why are you telling me all this <laughs> she'd been and gone. it wasn't the experience i thought she'd had and i was just mending my bit of worry by saying it to her and it was perfect and you know She's the same. I was telling you earlier that I was listening to her for an hour at bedtime, just lying there. And at one time, because I wanted her life to be perfectly, oh, I don't know, you know, like you, you want your, your granddaughter's life to be beautiful. It is beautiful, but I used to want to fix anything that didn't look beautiful. But I was able just to lie there and just be amazed at this little mind and this little person and the, and the sweetness, the sweetness of it. And, um, said very little, but I wasn't trying. It was very different experience. If you'd said to me five years ago, right, you mustn't say anything, just listen. I'd have been, mm, mm. oh, I'm not a very good grandma because mm, I could tell her how to fix that. And so I'm grateful. I'm grateful for, for, for what I've seen. Mm. Well, this has been a, a rich conversation hasn't it with all our talking and listening to each other haven't we been good <laughs> did we did we answer the all-important question why do people talk so much i think we did we did 
Well, and Marnix is here to do that. Marnix has done, yeah. done a good job. He, he jumped on his coattails and just sort of... We've talked a lot today, so... Well, I did want to say, Marnix, this is a personal thing, I just love reading your posts. I mean, mm. I'm not addicted to social media. In fact, I am. Um, and, I, you know, maybe we could talk about that. <laughs> not now. Um, but I love reading your Thanks. posts. They're just crisp and fresh and... Yeah. Like, like, sometimes they're like a punch. <laughs> In a big love, and I love it that you've you've got that pull. I feel like just very natural ability to to express. It's really yeah, lovely to be. Thank, thank you for them. Yeah, you're welcome. I love it too. Mm -hmm. I love it because <clears throat> I love it in many ways. But I love it. One of the biggest reasons I love it is because it it's such a such an expression of how I am in the world nowadays. You know, like yeah. like not there. I don't make a big deal out of writing these things. It just takes me 10 minutes and I forget about it. Like, I, I like that. I like the simplicity of creation. I've always been very much interested in how to make things more simple and more simple and more simple. And it's just very direct. And the thing is, <clears throat> I'm, I'm very uh, lucky in that my, uh, the amount of English words I know is pretty limited. So I have to you know, I have to keep it within a particular amount of words. And that's pretty helpful because it also helps making stuff simple. <clears throat> but mm -hmm. I think what most people feel is not the fact, I'm not a brilliant writer, but I'm um, I'm a pretty brilliant, not giving a fuck person <laughs> when it comes to writing. I just, I just write. And I think you feel the directness of that more than there's so many people who write way more beautiful and, and amazing than I do, but it's well, pretty honest and real stuff. And I think that's pretty rare. And I don't, it's not, it's not, it's not a, not an idea. It's not that I, I, that I try to make something like that. It just happened. It's not who, oh, unless I came up with real writing, it's my thing. I'm doing that because if you do it, you're not real writing you introduce another judgment or concept. So real writing is not being worried about what it looks like or how it feels or what it is. And it's just life, you know, going through you and yeah. right down the words. Feels like yeah. it's, it, it, the, the, it, it's an expression of a freedom. Um, that's the way that I see it. Like you're just free to just do that. Yeah. Just free. Yeah. Yeah, and the cool thing is that writing is seems to be at the forefront of everything, and then all, all the things in my life start to, you know, I, I talked to a coach a couple of months ago, and and she she asked me, she's my mentor, and she asked me, uh, how do you feel when you write? And I started to tell her about this amazing feeling that I fall into, and then I start to write, and how cool it is, and how easy it is, how simple it is, and she said, why don't you coach from that place? And mm. I thought, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. 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 Wow. I'm, okay. You know what? What, what comes up? Like, just one one thing to say. What comes up for me? And then first straight away, I thought, oh, you could you could create a course on how to help people do real writing. <laughs> so, so that was one. I thing. know. That was an that was an interesting thought in itself. But then I, you know, it's like for most people. I mean, oh, sorry again, me. But I think most people as well have to have a a fear. That would stop them doing what you're doing in your writing yeah. you know yeah. you are being to, to me it looks like you're being raw you know whatever's yeah. happening just that that's what's coming through no filters no i'm not filtering this i'm not going to tidy it up and make it nice and cross that bit out maybe you do i don't know but it doesn't no. look like that no. when i'm reading no. it and i never and revisit I could, my, my you know i could do that i could write loads of words on a page of how i'm feeling right now but you know honestly I think, why on earth would the world want to read that? Or read, do I want people to know I actually think that? Is that what? Well, do you do you do, do you, you want do you want to write that? That's that's where it starts. It doesn't. Well, you know, I don't. Maybe. I don't really no, care too much if people like it. Right. And and I thought about doing the course, and I probably will. It's but it's not a. I, I asked it like a, like a month ago. I posted on Facebook. So is anyone interested in writing, right? Doing a, a little course in writing from the I don't give a fuck place. Yeah. And because there are so many courses you can do on the basics of writing or on how mm -hmm. you chapters are supposed to be built up and, and, and the structure of writing. I have no clue. I wrote eight books and I have no clue about it. I know it. I can't explain mm -hmm. it, but I can talk about this place. I love talking about this place. I do it all the time. Mm -hmm. And um, 
So people, and the, the one, let's, let, 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 let me give you one tip. And, and, and this is for, for other people who might someday hear this. Um, nobody gives a shit about your writing. <laughs> <laughs> Only it. you do. Yeah. yeah. It's probably so like get over it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's just, it has so to be funny. very good and it has yeah. to be very, uh, you know, beautiful. And it has to, yeah. no, people don't care. Yeah. Just write it and, and maybe they'll find you and then they start caring. But, but they don't care. <laughs> There's not a, a lot, more than enough posts out there and books and blogs and podcasts. And they don't care. Yeah. Don't be bothered by that. Yeah, but of course it's, I care. That's the problem, isn't it? That's, that's the, the only that's problem. The gets in the way. <laughs> That's the only yeah. problem because when you think people care, it's all, still you that cares yeah. about the fact that other people care. It's always yeah. you. Yeah, look, look, we need another um, breakout session at Viva. <laughs> so yeah, we need I another think we do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We were going, oh my God, we, you know, we've spent so many hours getting this program ready and ch trying to, you know, it's such a jigsaw puzzle to, you know, with timings of people in the States and make sure they're not, you know, two people at the same time slot. I'm like, no, they can't be in two places at the same time. You know, with the topics and matching people to topics, it's been um, it's been an interesting learning curve and then to want to get it out into the world. So yeah, so you know, you've got, I don't know if you've got four, I think you've probably got four breakout sessions. Um, yeah. Five even, which is, yeah. you know, yeah. got, to, got to do a plug for Viva, you know, we've got to do a plug for Viva. Yeah, of so course, yeah. Can, yeah, I love it, I love it. Less, and not less just- than five Weeks away. Is, is it a secret? Is it a secret? Or, what, do you know? Is it still like? No, uh, it's all live on the website now. Okay, Anybody now okay. So people can see that I have one breakout session with Michael. Uh, yeah, Michael I forgot. Yeah, Michael Neal. Yay! <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. We we're gonna. Yeah, it's really interesting. I'm really looking forward to that, and especially yeah. because I, I, Michael, uh, when I, I did Super Coach Academy, and he, uh, yeah. when I when I did the Super Coach exam. Uh, which was one coaching session. I had to coach Michael, and it was the worst coaching session in my life. I remember reading wow, it. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. We didn't know that, obviously. When well, we you wrote about it, didn't you? Oh well, no, but it's fine because it was a really, really amazing slap in the in the face of my ego. You know, it was it was a very cool uh, experience. So I'm oh, fine. I love Michael, and I love and I yeah. love the year of of being with him. But I also like Jason a lot, and I love Jason. I will talk about Jason with other stuff. And there are other people. Um, we with, with who are the other people I'm with? I can't. Re we can't remember. We have. We, oh, okay. we put, we, I'd even forgotten good. that we'd, we'd asked you to, you know, do your break. I do know what the topic is because it was one of my ideas. Was um, creating a thriving coaching. Yeah, practice. yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, I think. So I you think can talk everybody... about. I don't, you know, you're writing. You're writing non-skills or skills. <laughs> No, I've, 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 but I've all, I've all, I've, I've ideas are up about this. So I, I'm sure you cool. do. Yeah. And um, I think that everybody should visit and be part of of Viva because uh, you know the, the 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 whole taster thing we had a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, really was a good uh, gave gave a lot away uh, already about yeah. the, the fun and the playfulness and the, and the, and mm -hmm. the connectedness with with everybody. So I think everybody. Who, who will see this or listen to this uh, should be part of the Viva yeah. conference because it will be a lot of fun and a lot of yeah. learning and a lot of talking and a lot of silence and a lot of laughing. We've even got a, an improv workshop this year. We've got a, oh. a, 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 a teacher who teaches improv and uh, runs workshops, so that should be fun. So we've got oh, we've yeah. got lots of different things going on this year cool. because we're online. We can, you know, it's like yeah. oh, we can bring these people, we bring these people. Oh, we could do we're that. Like, we're always on the lookout for people who want to jump in and join us in a surprise. Would you be one of those people? Well, next, he's talking to oh. you, not me. Oh. <laughs> I'm already well. in there. <laughs> what? Are you game well, I, I, being involved in a surprise? I'm asking am I, the public now. Do they want to be involved in a surprise? Yeah, if we yeah. if I create a or we create a surprise, we like to invite people to join us in bringing that to to the life. <laughs> so I'm just wondering if you're up for that. Yeah, why not? 
Perfect. Do you know what's fascinating? You know, we haven't even touched on the spiritual, but as this conversation's going on, you you're getting low, yeah, your light's coming in. <laughs> it's brilliant. Um, <laughs> Great. That is the blend. Yeah, that. Disappearing into the light. You are. <laughs> we saw That's it true. first. We captured it. <laughs> well, your mask. In terms of timekeeping, yeah. I could have done a better job, but I didn't want to. But it's, we've been on for hours. We've got yeah. lots of lovely people waving, though, and uh, saying yeah. hi. And um... Hi, people. <laughs> join the, join the, the Nut Conference. Join the movement. Join yes. the event. Yes. The Beaver event. Conference. The Beaver event. The non, the non conference. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See that you there. Thank you, Manix. Okay. Bye bye. Uh, bye. We'll speak again. Bye, everybody. Bye.